Welcome to the latest podcast, and this will be the last one on basketball, well, until next basketball season, because after a crazy week, it's finally over. Billy Donovan secured as Florida's basketball coach, three and a half million dollar contract over six years, and more importantly, I think, uh, obviously, as he finally was able to talk, he emerged from his home. And uh, Kevin Brockway joined me here from the Gainesville Sun. I'm Pat Dooley, sports columnist, the Gainesville Sun. And it was a wild and crazy seven-day period, Kevin. Yeah, very emotional, and certainly, uh, you know, for probably for Billy, probably for Jeremy Foley, probably really for everyone involved uh, with Florida basketball. From uh, I guess kind of the uh, sadness of him initially going to the Mag- Magic to you know the euphoria, the possibility of him coming back to the anxiety over you know, breaking the contract to today where we come with a resolution where he says his heart is in Florida and this is where he wants to be. You know, it's amazing. You think about the rush that Jeremy Foley must have felt when he landed in the Richmond airport, saw the Donovan uh, home phone number on his cell phone, picked it up and Christine Donovan was on the other end and said, Billy's having second thoughts. I mean, he had to be going through an incredible amount of emotion there himself. Yeah, and obviously in a very difficult situation, too, because, you know, Billy at that time is under contract with the Orlando Magic. He can't really, uh, you know, I think Jeremy alluded to in our stories, he doesn't really have control of the situation, but he knows in the back of his mind that, uh, you know, Billy's having these second thoughts. So he just talks to him basically as a friend and tries to guide him through things. And then obviously the story breaks Sunday night and kind of takes on a life of its own. And, uh, you know, there are a few critics out there about, you know, Billy's decision and waffling, but... He eventually ended up doing what he wanted to do, and he pointed out would have been pretty unfair of the Magic, you know, to move ahead in those kind of circumstances with his heart not in. Yeah, that's what he said uh, to me earlier. He said, "Look, the bottom line is, for me to go into that job in three years from now, go, you know, I never really wanted this job, would have been bad. Why you took the job in the first place is one of the questions I don't think he's really answered, uh, except that he thought, well, this is a, if I'm going to the NBA, this is a perfect opportunity, and he thought." His, as he said earlier, his heart would follow. Then it didn't follow. And as he said, he, he you know, Friday night he wasn't feeling good about it. Saturday morning he said, man, I screwed up. If you think about it, I think all coaches, in a way, really aspire to that next level. But mm-hmm. it has to be the right situation. It has to be the right time. And as he said, and as he alluded to, you have to have the right feeling going into it. And uh, he just did not have the right feeling, uh, apparently, when he woke up that Saturday morning. And... Uh, you know, uh, it's pretty amazing that I guess Christine was the one that ended up making the phone calls right. and reported to uh, Jeremy Foley, and uh, from there the process got to where it is now. And a lot of people affected by this, and, and it's funny, I, I use this in my column, it was almost like we were listening to uh, Billy Donovan's confession at the press conference because he was saying, I'm sorry to this person, I did this, and three Hail Marys, and, and four of our fathers, because he, uh, there was a lot of people affected, least of all, not least of which was the two of us. But there were. When you think about it, I talked to a couple of members of, of uh, Billy's staff, uh, you know, not assistant coaches, but other members, and they said, look, we weren't going. We love Gainesville. And for those of you who are watching this and don't live in Gainesville, I'm sure you wish you did. But there, it was it affected a lot of people, Kevin. Yeah, and uh, it certainly wasn't as bad as, say, maybe even three or four years ago, a Christian Dreyer situation when it happens in the middle of a season. And, uh, you know, uh, players aren't necessarily in practice. They're kind of working out and around their in class. But still, there has to be a level of anxiety and wonder when you go through a six-day process like this. You know, what's going on? Is he going to be our coach? Is he not going to be our coach? Um, But, you know, most of the players surprisingly took it in stride. You know, I talked to Marty Spates a couple days ago, and he was just like, hey, I'm just working out. I'm doing my homework. I'm doing my thing. So, you know, they're a pretty resilient group. And, uh, you know, 18 to 21 is a pretty resilient age. Um, I think that they're going to come back, and I, I don't see any, you know, uh, lingering pre, you know, uh, repercussions or anyone feeling any sense of, uh, you know, kind of anger or resentment over right. this. I think it's going to, I think it's going to go ahead smoothly. Well, the other thing is, uh, there, uh, the, this was one of the most unstable weeks in the history of Florida basketball, and it produced the most stability this program's ever had. Billy Donovan isn't going anywhere, and the players all know that. The recruits should know that now. Not only the incoming recruits, but recruits in the future. But because Billy's not going anywhere. He said, I'm done with the NBA. I have no interest in the NBA. We already know he turned down Kentucky. There isn't anything else out there for him. So as long as Florida wants him, he will be the coach at the University of Florida and with a hefty pay- paycheck. The other thing, one last thing before we go, it was clear talking to Jeremy, 
this was a one-stop coaching search, Anthony Grant would have been the coach of Florida. Yeah, and uh, I think this certainly raises his stock. You know, some people yeah. would say maybe he's a loser. I, agree with you, I think that he's probably a winner in all this mm-hmm. because you know he's considered for a job uh, of, of this magnitude, and also uh, you know as you read tomorrow, Jeremy's. Uh, uh, comments about him, the way he handled this situation, which was obviously a very dis- difficult situation, was apparently with first class, and uh, that would be certainly something that another institution would probably look at and say, Absolutely. this is a guy that you know uh, we can we can build a program around. Yeah, don't forget, they were ready to hand him the keys to the two-time defending national champion. That says a lot for Anthony, and he will be somewhere else in a couple of years, I'm sure. That's going to do it for today's podcast. We appreciate you for joining us. Until next time, Kevin Brockway. Pat Dooley saying so long from the Sunshine State.